How was this a movie? It's time for Ninjetti. They put on their masks and Adam says that they're tough because they're made out of rock. Thanks, Adam. It's time to put our stunt people to work, damn it. Just kidding, the Rangers straight up suck against these guys, struggling to do anything. Thankfully, Rocky is climbing a rope, which makes it so that he just gets in danger. Adam saves him though, kicking the rock creature into the water, which dissolves it. Meanwhile, Aisha is stuck in a cave, about to get skewered. Luckily, Rocky comes and saves her, kind of. Tommy and Kim literally roll a giant rock at one kill again. Now Adam, being the best ranger, is taking on two at once, and he and Billy do a pulley system, which causes one to slice the other in the face, and the last one throws a weapon at Rocky who splits over it. Then, Billy and Kim kick him before Tommy does a Ninjetti corkscrew kick, which destroys the last creature. Suddenly, an earthquake starts to occur as the door of the monolith opens, revealing a big triangle thing with a symbol on it with all their new animals. Apparently, it is the Great Power, which starts to shine, unleashing golden figures of their new Zorge, which zoom around them before they collide with the symbols on their chests, morphing them back into their suits. They teleport out of there, zooming past Al Dulcia, who says, Good luck, Rangers, as a bird. Meanwhile, Hornetron is walking through the streets of Angel Grove while Ivan and Goldar are watching from above. Gorbatron is there as well, firing at cars as the people run in panic. Then Hornetron steps on a car. Alpha sees what's happening on the news on the viewing globe in the command center, updating Zordon. Now, it's night in Angel Grove, and Ivan smells the teenagers again, who teleport back into the place, seeing the destruction. They plan to go back to the command center for a moment before Scorpatron starts to stalk toward them. And behind them, Hornetron comes walking in. Time to call out the new Ninja Zords. They fly up into the cockpits of their new Zords, climbing aboard, and Alpha says that the Crane Zord has a nice stereo, which is a nice little reference to one of the first episodes of Mighty Morphin. Meanwhile, remember how the parents of Angel Grove were walking to commit suicide? Yeah, I forgot too, but yeah, they're still doing that. At Ernie's, a bunch of children are partying while there's ooze literally everywhere, and even Bulk and Skull are there. Fred shows up, getting their attention. He tells them how their parents are brainwashed and that they need to go do something or else their parents are going to die. Meanwhile, Tommy is zooming around in the Falcon Zord, firing rockets from its wings at Scorpatron, who fires back, causing Tommy to back off. Adam moves in, wrapping his tongue around Scorpatron, zapping it. He needs backup, but here comes Billy in the Wolf Zord, grabbing onto the machine's tail. The Bear Zord stands up to Hornetron and just gets hit right away, knocking Aisha's metal off of her chest. How was this a movie? Rocky and the Ape Zord jumps down onto the machine trying to take him down. Also, Fred, Bulk and Skull plus the kids climb aboard the monorail and somehow Fred knows how to drive it. Ivan then says that the cute little pink ranger is coming to the rescue and Goldar says, Oh, you think she's cute too, huh? And one of the only good comedy beats Goldar will ever get in this show. Kim is in the Crane Zord going straight for Ivan, but Ivan zaps her while the others are struggling too. Kim uses her thrusters, getting free. Meanwhile, the Wolf Zord has ripped off Scorpatron's tail. Falcon Zord is incoming, and Adam disengages while Tommy fires rockets at Scorpatron, blowing it up into nothingness. Time to focus on the other one. Rocky gets tossed off of its back as the other Zords come in, and Ivan is pissed they just destroyed Scorpatron, so he turns into a tunnel of ooze, filling in Hornetron and putting his own face on the machine. He then rips the tower out of the ground, stepping on the monorail. Ninja Megazord power, now! Tommy says that since the monorail is in trouble, he'll complete docking sequence later while the other five come together into one of the ugliest Megazords I have ever seen. They call out their power sword, fighting Ivan. Meanwhile, the monorail is still going and they see that the track is broken. Luckily, here comes Tommy in the Falcon Zord, laying down in the space that's been missing now, while they glide over it. Ivan then just destroys the power sword. They say that they need Tommy's help while Ivan just picks them up and throws them into a big bank, going through the entire building. Tommy finally links up with them, joining them in the cockpit. Billy suggests that they set a course for outer space to get Ivan out of there. And then Ivan pulls out wings of his own, taking flight. At the construction site, the parents are ready to commit suicide, getting closer and closer to the edge. But here come all the kids, and Fred sees that the drop is insane from there. But he also sees a couple of other things. He tells Bulk and Skull to help him, while the others try to push the parents back as best as they can. In space, Billy says that they should just toss Ivan into Ryan's Comet, since it should be coming soon. Meanwhile, the children are still struggling to hold back the parents, when luckily, here comes Fred with a big power washer, 
and he fires the crowd, pushing them back. This is weird. Ivan flies by the moon, and Rita and Zed are still in the snow globe, cheering on the Power Rangers. Then Ivan attacks the Megazord, and they're hurtling through space. They're in the trajectory, and Aisha hits a button for emergency use only, which kicks Ivan in the crotch, getting them free as Ivan hits the comet, dying upon impact. The hell kind of resolution was that? At the construction site, now that Ivan is dead, the parents come to their senses and Fred yells for his father, coming down from the machine and hugging him. This would be a lot more touching if I cared about this child, like even in the slightest. The Rangers appear in the command center and Alpha says that they're unfortunately too late and it looks like Zordon has died. Well, that's a sad ending. Then Tommy comes up with the idea that Dulcia said how the Ninjetti powers, you know, everything's possible, whatever. So the six come together around Zoran, firing out their chest symbols somehow over him, which magically start to not only repair the entire command center, but it also brings Zordon back to life, reconstructing his tube. Kim says, we thought you had, and Zordon says, it is good to see you again too, in a very nice little moment. At Ernie's, Bulk and Skull talk about how they were in the thick of this attack. Fred comes up to the Ranger teens, and they talk about how he's such a hero for being cool under pressure. Aisha says that he might be in line to be a ranger someday too, and Fred says that he's going to be the silver ranger. But then he says, nah, the gold ranger. Then fireworks start going off while a sign says, thank you, Power Rangers. And Bulk and Skull are mad that they're not thanking them instead. Kim and Tommy, aka the most important characters, look on, cheering on the fireworks as we fade to credits. But what's this? A mid credit scene? Goldar and Mordent are hanging out in the throne room, and Goldar is acting as King Goldar, when suddenly Rita and Zed walk in, pissed off. The end. So to be honest, this movie gets ragged on a lot by people for being terrible, but maybe it's just my nostalgia, but I don't see how. It literally pays off on every single thing it sets up, and it's like the best written multi-parter of Power Rangers ever. Ivan Ooze terrified me as a child, which is exactly what you want a villain to do. Rita and Zed walk that fine line between funny and menacing, while Goldar and Morden are comedic relief. The Rangers themselves are awesome because there's just so many damn fight scenes in this film that showcase how good at martial arts they all are. Really, the only thing I can knock this film for is including Fred as a character at all and how they finished Ivan by hitting him in the crotch. Those are legitimately the only two things that truly bother me. Everything else is solid, and if you like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers at all, you'll like this film. Easy. Don't forget that every single Tuesday and Thursday, I do Ranger reviews where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers, and then afterwards, we discuss them. After this video comes out, we'll be diving into season three. Make sure you're all caught up and ready for that. But until then, may the power protect you.